Well, it's a great pleasure for me to be here again with some of my older friends that I've known for a very long time. So happy to see them again. It was my great pleasure to return to the headquarters in 1991 for the 100th anniversary celebration. Before today, I would particularly like to thank Kim Sung Ho for inviting me to come here, and I would like to thank my translator, Lee Yongju, for putting the hard work for me. I don't know if you remember, in, in the 100th anniversary, there was uh, a halo around the sun. Do you remember that day? Well, I still have my picture taken that day of the sun. I'd like to say that the 21st century is bringing with it many great challenges to the world. And the changes are happening so fast that we hardly know how to handle one situation or a completely new situation that there is. Those of you in this room who are in positions of leadership in, in the one tradition are going to be called upon to respond to our current world and to prepare us for future developments. This is a heavy responsibility because, as I was saying to the Master today, it's a difficult task to, pre to predict the future. I think we always feel that our time is the most difficult and that we have problems which nobody has ever faced before. But I think back to 1916 or 1915 when the one tradition was being established by Master Sofe san And I think of all the problems that the world faced at that time and the problems to which he tried to address his message. In 1916, the world was on the brink of a world war, and we had The world was in the height of its colonial period when nations from Europe and from Japan were ruling large parts of the earth. It was, in many ways, a terrible time. When I showed this picture of the Empire of Japan, for example, Many of my students were shocked. The issue with Russia was that Russia was just about to be taken over by the revolution and was to spread its borders all the way to the very frontiers of Korea. And even though he was here, the Industrial Revolution was primarily occurring in Europe parts of Japan, he saw the dangers of it, and he saw the problem of people becoming so tied to the products produced by the Industrial Revolution that they would lose their spirit. So the One Buddhist tradition started here in this part of Korea. It was an attempt to help people earn their living come to grips with the problems of everyday life. And it was filled with new innovations about farming, about religious life. It was a major development at this, that particular time in the world. So when I think about Master Sopesan and I think of what he faced and what he was trying to address, we cannot feel that what we face today is so much more complicated, so much more difficult than what you face. Basically, it isn't. It was complex. The world was in terrible troubles. It was, it was a very difficult time. It would be his destiny, as for many of you here, to see the world torn apart by even more destruction in Asia and Europe as the Second World War descended upon us. The first war to be fully fought with industrial technology weapons. And we'll have to
to write, why is it that in the 20th century, millions of people were killed because people in the 20th century did not know how to solve their problems peacefully? We have reached a place where our consumption of the world resources has reached a level that appears to be unsustainable. The whole world economies at the moment are faced with a future that is very uncertain at the best. So for the talk today, I can't address all the world's problems. But what I would like to do is to look back to the words of Master Sote San and ask myself the question, were his words and thoughts that were addressed to 20th century problems in any way applicable to the problems that we face in the 21st century? I think that we have to recognize that we are in the midst of a great technological shift that's changing the way we communicate with one another. I'm here using my little computer. The memory in this computer was once required 30 tons of machinery to hold it. So we are changing the whole way in which we have information and how we communicate with that information. This young man in Switzerland in the end of the 20th century had a very simple idea a world wide web. His idea did not take many decades to realize. Within three months of his first software, it was found in most of the major places of the earth. Within oh. three months. And within three years, the world wide web was found in every city on earth. So that means that all of our children who are under 15 will live their whole life with the World Wide Web. It will not be a startling new development for them. It will just be the way life is. Somebody has said that the present internet is about that size and the rest of that great network is what will come in the future. Living in Seoul this summer has reminded me of never before. Exactly how enormous this network is. This is an actual map. You can't see it very well, but it's an actual map of all the connections through fiber optic cable around the world. So every day in Seoul, I see what's happening. Everybody uses the cell phone on the subway. They are standing at the street corner watching television on a handheld device. And they are sending text messages from the classroom. They don't listen to my lecture, they send text messages. Last summer I had a great shock. I, I, my class and I said to the students, we're going to do everything by email. You're going to send me your paper and I'm going to send you my response and we'll do it by email. I realized the students were very unhappy and they were restless and finally one of them raised, one of the boys raised his hand and said, Professor, we don't do email. I said, what do you mean you don't do email? Everybody does email. Oh, our parents do email, and our grandparents do 